The Stade des Alpes, our third stop on the opening weekend of the 2022 TikTok Women's Six Nations. And a very good afternoon to you. Approaching four in the afternoon local time as France are at home to visitors Italy. It's third in the world against eighth in the world. A weekend that's, uh, well, already seen two attendance records broken in Edinburgh and Dublin. They've been packing the stands for women's matches for a long time over in France. This one is set to break the record for a France against Italy match. It's a pleasure to be here once again. Round one's first two matches played yesterday, then England defeating Scotland by nine tries to get their title defence off to a flyer, while in Dublin, a much tighter affair. Wales kicking off their professional era by winning away from home in a real cracker. Donna Rose with a brace before Hannah Smith's icing on the cake there. As for the head-to-heads, well, a bit of history. Overall, they've met 22 times. And uh, just the one draw. France comfortably winning 19 times to three. They won the last meeting in Limoges by 45 points to 10. But, well, Italy beat Le Bleu in 2019 in Padua. But when France are at home, their record is solid. Not a single loss in 11 meetings. And they're every confidence of keeping that record intact this afternoon. Well, ski season might be in full swing for those flying in and out of Grenoble this weekend. But, uh, well, look, 22 degrees tells you spring is in the air. And Philippa Tatiat former Welsh international alongside me. Well, we'll struggle on, won't we, with the uh, the TikTok Women's Six Nations in its later window. Conditions like this we have to endure. How are you? Oh, I'm excellent. I mean, yes, how lucky are we to do what we do? What a fantastic location and just brilliant to be part of rounding off what has already been such an exciting opening round of this year's Women's Six Nations with those entertaining games, that incredibly tight fixture with Wales Island. I'm so excited to see what can Italy do. Rugby loving French public. Well, they've only just stopped partying after the men secured the Grand Slam last week in Paris. They are ready now to cheer on the France Féminin team. And it is a glorious afternoon. Last few words then being shared and uh, it looks like it's Manuela Farlan who is, well, being allowed as uh, one of the senior players to lay down those last few final words. Into the inner sanctum. Amazing to be able to have this access. A few decent outfits in the crowd as well. Just see through to Rigoni as well as Italy are given the knock. It is time to start their walk out. The crowd have been G'd up. And as Italy head from the changing rooms, well, there are 250 cappers being recognized today, and here they come. Number eight, Elisa Giordano, it's her 20th consecutive start, and the enigmatic dynamo that is Beatrice Rigoni. Rigoni being asked to occupy the fly half roll this afternoon instead of her usual place at inside centre. But it was against France in 2020 when she last pulled on the 10 jersey. It was in fact the last time that these two sides met, what with the shortened version of the Six Nations that was put in place last year. Italy finishing fifth overall. But France, will they come into this year's championship fresh from those two stunning wins against New Zealand's Black Ferns in November? Well, the tourists were a bit like an experience. You could take nothing away from those pretty ruthless performances from France. And given we're now well, in Rugby World Cup year, those results will not just have given Annick A. Rhodes' side a ton of confidence, tease things up very nicely for the big one in New Zealand come October. Gaëlle Armé leads out the French side, along with Anael de A. And it's Giordano. And Rigoni, who do it for Italy. Few other big names missing for France. No Safi NDA, no Caroline Bouchard, both of those out with knee injuries. No Paul on Pauline Bourdon. She cut her finger cooking. Others not involved include Celine Ferrer, Cyril Banet. Really keen to see how some of these lesser known names will slot in. Now, a moment for both teams and all of us involved to continue to enforce the message that racism is not welcome and not tolerated in rugby, in sport, or the world we live in. It's like 
the message as well showing solidarity with Ukraine. It's a message held by all of the six unions across the six nations and no doubt across the wider rugby family. Plenty of pride and honour on show today then. First of all, let's hear the anthems. Beautifully marked and supported. Here, there's over 13,000 in. Let's check out the teams then. Starting with the French, Hermé, captains as wing forward behind that mighty front row of De Haye, Socha and Joyeux. Emmeline Gros, an outstanding player last year before she missed that final. The back, see local Grenoble player, 21-year-old Alexandra Chambon, handed the start at scrum half with Pauline Bourdon out injured. And the back three may feel a little unfamiliar, just 11 caps between them. Castel, Mourier, back after three years out and seven-star Chloe Jacquet. For Italy, well, the forwards include Sarah Tunesi in the second row, plays her rugby in France, with Elisa Giordano, as we saw, lead out the side on the occasion of her 50th cap. We have to go back to February 2018 for the last time she didn't start. No Giada Franco, no Ilaria Araghetti could be an area that France target, while in the backs, Bea Rigoni, the other 50 cap are playing at 10 instead of 12, and it's a first start for centre Elisa Dinka alongside Sillery, with Muzzo brought onto the right wing, Captain Furlan shifting to 15. On the benches, a debut in line for prop Carl Fawi, wearing 18, and the familiar Tremoulier for France. For Italy, Stecker and Frangipani, the uncapped duo. Sarah Baratine is in there, in line for a 102nd cap. Yeah, this fixture is going to be so interesting. As much as we know that the Italians will be buoyed with confidence for qualifying for the World Cup, sadly, they have not played an international game since September. This will be their first outing, which is in sharp contrast to the very successful autumn that the French team had, casually beating New Zealand twice. Yeah, it is the sort of game where Italy could play some of their best rugby, but still find it difficult to live with France, who will have loved those two results against the Black Ferns. But it's a good Italy side. Yeah. 
France look to get things going with Caroline Drouin. The Wren fly half, 37 points in the autumn. Our referee is Sarah Cox. France's TikTok Women's Six Nations campaign is underway alongside Italy. And it's 50 cap to Lisa Giordano, who is the first one to take the ball in. Rigoni, talk about her wearing the 10 shirt. She so often would step in at first receiver, even when there's a 12 on her back. Had to get down low to take that and uh, has fired a decent clearance over to the far side, having seen Castell just a little flatter up. Yeah, it's certainly a good exit there from yeah. Italy. They'll be pleased to relieve some of that pressure. Be interesting, actually, different combinations at 9 and 10 for both the Italians and the French. So an area to really look at there. Voice of former Welsh international Philippa Tatiet or Tutiet with the, uh, <laughs> the French pronunciation of your surname. There is some history there, isn't there? <laughs> Drew out then. Up the middle, it's going to be a spill from Anael de A, but Offside, it's a early. penalty already. Number? against Italy just straying offside so offside at the back of the line out. well it was uh, most of the back line by the sounds of things according to Sarah Cox and Drew out not interested in any points from that sort of range wants to get France into Italy's 22 yeah absolutely good call really good execution there on the line out as well potentially just a little bit of nerves there from the Italians they know how good the French back line will be with ball in hand. So they are going to be trying to put loads of pressure on that. But obviously, got to make sure they're coming from an onside position. I got so shot. Montpellier hooker. Looking to go to the tail. Often more high risk, but France doing just enough to manage to get hold of it. Ball pops up and the uncompromising Roman Menager. Happy to take it forwards. Coming screaming round the corner was Emmeline Bro. Didn't find her. Instead, Philippon's going to have to do the tidying up work. Good footwork from her to begin with. De A told to release it out the back, but perhaps like we saw with England yesterday, France just a little disconnected to begin with. The nerves showing as Vernier you, yeah, you've comes got to forwards. He's allowed you on there. Rigoni. Ten quicker, the please. Pinged by the referee. Told she needs to get out of there. Yeah, you can certainly see what France are trying to do, looking at those little tip-on passes, especially if they can get players running around the back. Because their forward carriers are so strong, they're such a threat. You can imagine that the Italian defence are just going to honey pots. They're just going to flood in around that potential runner. So if they can release the ball around the back, they will create space for themselves. But just a bit of miscommunication, and potentially it's just that classic first game of the Six Nations. Bit of nerves, bit of rustiness. Ball's not quite going to hand. Drouin, 20 points in last year's championship. Certainly capable of nailing them from all over the park, but her official accuracy from last tournament was actually only 61%. This should be a pretty simple one, though, and no mistake. The Tricolores are waving in the Stade des Alpes. France take a three-point lead. That's really good management as well. You know, they had that earlier opportunity to have a shot at goal, but they hadn't really gotten to the 22, hadn't really challenged for anything. They went again, it didn't come off, lots of handling errors. You know what, at that point, you close the door on it, take your points, reset, go nice. again. Beatrice Ragoni looks to try and just drop it in behind. Gabriel Vernier missed it, and then Philippon knocked it on. I mean, given that France kicked the game off, you so often see within those first few phases, yes, we had an exit from Italy, but actually the pressure stays on in that half from the kickoff, doesn't it? And then the opportunity to get a penalty and then take the points. We now see Italy, their first opportunity from the kickoff to get into France's territory. They force the error, they have a scrum. Exactly that, yeah, and it all came from a really good high restart there. Lots of pressure on. Really interesting formation for the Italians behind the scrum. They are fully loaded to the right-hand side, but I dare say this could be a decoy. Yeah, you can just see they've got uh, Ferland queuing up behind Rigoni. Which way are they going to go here? The ball is at the back for Giordano. It's screwing around, and it now will be a penalty. 
stepping out and around. And that will uh, no doubt please Andrea Di Gian Domenico. French will have felt that they were competing hard there, but having to do it round the corner is he not must legal. Drive straight, not at an angle. Yeah, absolutely. You can just see when you get that much of an acute change of that scrum and starts turning that quickly, something's gone on. You do feel it could be a bit of a difficult day at the office for the Italians with the likes of Arigetti and Giada Franco. They had so much power, so much weight to that pack. Yeah, big shoes to fill for uh, the six capped, or now seven capped, Francesca Sperna. But Sillery to take an opportunity and get Italy all square, which she does. Very nice, clever boxing by both teams at the moment, taking their opportunities where they can. Crucially now, as you just alluded in those last phases of play, is the exit from Italy to relieve that pressure. Well, Druin set the first kick deep enough. That one just outside the 22, Giordano takes it. It's a really good placement of the kick because means that Italy can't clear it from inside the 22 direct to touch. Now Rigoni looking to put a little bit more width on it. That was the tip on, but tackle hit was good. Gaia Maris carries it on. Now Rigoni, right hand side. Oh, she's gone for a little chip through herself. Was she taken out? Officials aren't looking at it. But Italy have managed to come through and win that back. Super work from the Azzurri. Played away. Sophia Stefan, Rigoni, looking to find a little bit more with Sillery. Long pass out. Oh, it was a tough one for Giordano okay. to take, but we were playing and a penalty advantage. Go good continuity from Italy. No it go is back. good continuity, but actually, uh, Sarah Cox, there, the referee, was just saying what I was about to say. They just went straight across the pitch. There was no punch going on. They actually managed to shorten the French defensive line, and they created an overlap. But an overlap can easily be defended if the players that are running at you aren't putting something onto it. You can just shadow them across the field, which is what France did. But how they managed to regather this, I'm not quite sure, because there were plenty of French bodies there. Stability. You can just see there, there is the player in space, but unfortunately it was far too lateral for them to really expose that space. Sophia Stefan. It was a knock-on advantage, not a penalty advantage. Uh, yeah. Should have said. Stefan, back in the scrum half roll. She was actually on the left wing for uh, their final match of Rugby World Cup qualification you must hold your weight. Your in the autumn. Please. Hold your weight. Plays a rugby at Padova. Already, Sarah Cox is getting in and... Uh, having to own things between the two sides at scrum time. Yeah, Sophia Stefan scored a really good try, actually, against Ireland in those World Cup qualifiers. As we see her starting here, it pushes Sarah Baratini, the only 100-capped female Italian player in history, onto the bench, so it's credit to Stefan. Front rows have gone down. Italy have chosen to play. Wait here. Stefan just delays it, perhaps inviting the French to stray offside. Rigoni sends it downfield, but they're going to play it infield, France, and find Jacquet, who has Léa Murier on her outside. First time back in the side for three years, Murier, by all accounts, has trained exceptionally well over the course of the last year or two, known the work she needed to do and what it's merited. She's got the 14 on her back for no other than Cyrielle Banet. Madusu Fal. She was taking names, def names defensively a moment or two ago, and now she's in possession. But Alexandra Chambon is driven back in possession. Driving forwards, France holding on to the ball, middle of the park. Chambon looks to the right, but Drouin is waiting on the left. A little bit more depth to find Philippon, and then Jacquet. Ball's gone forwards off Rigoni in the tackle that she made. It was a good hit. France are going to look to continue playing, though, while they have this advantage. 
Forlani. Big frame of the second row, turned 30 in November. Got a 50th cap against New Zealand in the autumn. Knock on advantage has been played, but Clara uh, Lucia Guy has been absolutely smashed in the hit. Over the top it goes, though. Drew out. Some gathering to do. Being invited down that channel, but Rigoni really held it and just waited for the intercept. Beatrice Rigoni, not quite the pace to get away. And now France go and play the ball at the base of the ruck. To an onside position. But you can hear referee Sarah Cox saying they weren't onside before they went. Must Great awareness from the Italian fly half. Position. Absolutely. What a frantic bit of play there. You have to say credit to the Italian defence. They really did hinder the French onslaught forwards. Not many teams can do that. My only concern would be the amount of Italians they are putting into that contact area. But here we go. This is where we see we're going reading it beautifully. She did have cover in behind her. You can just see behind her there. She did have cover in, so she could almost gamble for that pass, knowing that if she didn't make it and the ball got away, there would be cover in behind her. Just a shame she didn't quite have the pace to make the most of it. The pacier days for Beatrice Rigoni may be a little behind her, but the skill set is still on top form and the reading of the game. Italy are looking to maul this line out from the penalty. Options for Italy. It's going to be a carry for Tunisi. Plays a rugby at Romagna with the likes of Jesse Tremoulière, who is on the bench for France. Was Madusu Fall a little high there? It's going to be played away regardless. Stefan Rigoni. Rigoni on the run around. Philippon made the hit. Rigoni managed to free the hands and make the offload. Italy come again. Rigoni met again. Took two, but she still got the pass away. What is she made of? <laughs> Infield from Stefan. Italy building well here. A couple of metres to go. Are they over with Patoni? Sarah Cox is having a look. Her view is it's held up. It'll be a goal line dropout. And it certainly made things very quiet in the Stade des Alpes. It certainly has, but equally you could see there were some friends, uh, French, French fans then clapping that offloading play. And absolutely, like you say, Beatrice Rigoni, she took some hits then and still managed to keep the ball alive. That was credit. That attacking, that whole attacking piece was credit to her. French have got some good distance on the dropout. Aramuzzo back in for Ferlan. Ferlan then in for Stefan. Oh, has that gone backwards? Yes, says the referee. Tidy up job then for Ferlan. <laughs> Penalty goes to France. Experienced fullback just found herself a little isolated. Good work from Agatso Shut. Yeah, and that was a really good dropout, wasn't it? Not only was it a great long kick, it was the kick chase then that put pressure on, made sure the contact situation was well out of the 22. Yeah, excellent work rate at the breakdown there. It's just that speed to ruck. Are you going to see the chop? Unbelievable, keeping that ball alive like that. And it's not like it's a little lift either. She actually put in a five meter pass. In set. High risk, but high reward. Yeah. Forlani the dummy at the front. Elme with the tap down at the back. De A off throughout, up in the middle, but a real drive back in the tackle. And that was a good statement of intent. Solid work from Sarah Tunesi, but France may have numbers on this left side now. A grow. Oh, she's thrown it a fair way forward there. Missed the big Option. showdown at the end of last year's Six Nations with injury. Shoulder injury for Gro. She's been huge through the tournament. Well, that's what her name means, Gro. Uh, but uh, she was back playing all three November games. Yeah, that's a real shame, that is, because you can't quite see it on there, but she just puts a subtle little bit of footwork to actually turn her hips to face inside, which fixed the defender beautifully. But like you say, unfortunately, that forward pass couldn't make the most of it. Nicely down off the top, well taken by Duca Rigoni. Elisa Dinka managing to offload.
Magoni. Another one of those little chips down the 15-metre channel. Jacquet gets it back. Magoni makes the tackle. Forlani. Dashing up was Maria Magatti. Once the player gets that knee to the ground, they have to release. Drew up on the tidy up job. Round the back though, Gro that time. She certainly meant it as she fired it to Marie Aurelie Castel. Just earning a fourth cap on that left wing. The ball is out. Plays a rugby okay, with the go, Italian move. hooker Bettoni at, uh, at Ren. <laughs> Vernier. Well, France are getting the benefit of an Italian offside. Well, they are certainly not, not looking eight. their normal composed offside. selves. Yeah, and I think that is a bit of credit there for the Italian defence. OK, granted, they were caught offside then, but they certainly are putting plenty of pressure onto France. And that's what their goal will be, because as we know, when they can connect those passes and they can get those out the ball, out the back sort of balls going, they're incredibly threatening. That's right, right. You see a really good look, double there up go. hits on the there. On here. One going low, one targeting the ball, forcing the error. No, 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 no. Just got to try and be a bit more disciplined. They've obviously given the sideline referee a picture that they're on the edge of offside. They really need to, as a team now, collectively, give it at least half a metre. Make it really clear and obvious they're coming from an onside position. Tidy up job at the back of the line out done by Clara Joyeux. Lea Mourier is screaming for it down on this right touch line. Forlani. Tackle! Was well held. Erme. Of course, she was the dummy runner, but she did still manage to catch it. Drew out. Nearly given the chance to get through. Sillery tries to rip it away. Menager. Forlani comes round the corner, has Fall outside. Fall is given the ball and goes for the line. It's Manusu Fall with France's opening try. Beautifully built and finished in the second row. Yeah, just that constant bit of ball carrying from France. Just like I alluded to earlier in the game. As much as the Italians' defence is really good, they're having to commit a lot of players. Look how many players are honeypotting in around that area, and they just managed to shorten it. You know, it's a great carry here, but actually, if they could have got the ball out wide, you only had one other defender on the other side of the goalpost, so pretty much half the field of space to expose. I dare say that'll be their next progression now, trying to expose that space out wide. Hundred percent so far for Caroline Drouin. France reaping the reward of the pressure. They lead by ten points to three. You can just see there. Look at this carry now, and look how many it Italian players it took to try and stop her. Three people around her ankles. Just too many in that position. Italy as well already having conceded four penalties. Do you want to give us your extraordinary stat from yesterday? Oh, which one? I have a plethora. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, absolutely backing myself. No, I, I must be honest, I was very proud to say that Wales only conceded five penalties in their incredibly tight fixture against Ireland, and none of them were within Wales' 22, which I just think is incredible discipline. It certainly is. We've not played 20 minutes yet, and Italy are already up to four, so uh, tells you the other side of that discipline story. It's rare enough to be in France for an afternoon kickoff as well. Quite a joy. You're used to the shadows that we see normally being from the floodlights. They love their 9 pm kickoffs. But uh, we are in the sunshine in Grenoble. Binds! Set! Knock on forced by France then. 
straight across. Well, forced by Italy on France, I should say, but uh, penalty Number goes one. against Anna Just at the back. Yeah. We're going to make sure everyone's behind it. Safety first and the... Uh, Set the line. Yeah, go on, mate. Touchline marked by Amy. Precious Pazani of uh, Zimbabwe. Amy barrett Theron is the other official. And these yep. teams yeah, of officials no are being you. given as much experience through the Women's Six Nations. They've been working through the men's under-20s as well. Chance to really be up to speed in teams with that World Cup on the horizon later in the year. Good line out for Italy. We saw them all one. A fair amount of distance on the far side a few moments ago. Stay bound. They were held up when they got over the line over this side, but this is still going forwards for Italy. She's always bound in. Always bound in. Stay bound. Audrey Forlani is trying to use the octopus hands to get through and cause a problem, but it's still going forwards for Italy. Now there's a penalty advantage. Forlani deemed to have changed her bind. Five. Two big confidence boosters there for the Italians. First getting that scrum penalty, then getting another one at the driving mall. It takes a good team to outmuscle this French pack. Yes, granted, like you mentioned, they're missing some big hitters, but still, there's plenty of size, plenty of strength there. And the Italians are very much fronting up. Well, they've just gone 17 meters with one catch and drive. They've now got just five metres to go. Yep. They are that critical five metres. They've got to get the line out right. Melissa Batoni. Oh, look for Locatelli, but it's gone over the top. And Madhu Soufal will pick it up for France. Opportunity lost for Italy. Gro then takes it down. The clearance kick, though, will give Italy the line out. Just a little further out. As to their previous but one. Yeah, it hasn't yeah, relieved yeah, much yeah, pressure yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, did right. look a bit of yeah, a forced kick. Chambon didn't really look like she was in a very right. comfortable position. Really good challenge the there at the Please line out. A little bit of an overflow, but like stay I say, mark, really good challenge from the French pack there. France, stay! Italy going with the full line out once again going to be Giordano at the tail this time. Plays it straight away for Stefan and right on the shoulder was Locatelli. Looked like it was on momentarily for Italy or that. Well, it looked like it might have been forwards to begin with, but either way, it's handed possession over to France. Philippon carries it forwards. Chambon for Forlani. Can they get it out for Jacquet? Jacquet chips it forwards. Ferlan has work to do and Jacquet's tearing after the fullback. A brave decision to go straight in to both the French defenders that were flying out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No! <laughs> Italy with Tunisie. Stefan. Finding Castel. Back in for Jacquet. Nogier has run across to support on the right, but it's not going to come this way soon because. Straight down the 15-metre channel they go, and Your hands are on the floor first. it's another penalty against Italy. Going beyond the ball with the you hands first. Yeah, right. and that's frustrating because actually, from where Chloe Jacke first kicked that ball, it's Italy managed to field it and then push them right back and make the contact area pretty much from where the first kick started, so negated any sort of territorial gain that France were trying to get from that element of kicking, but then gave away the penalty. So now France have managed to get a massive territorial game. So it's just frustrating, well, little okay. things like that. Yeah. Have such a big impact. Here we go, see, she spots the, the space in the background. There's plenty of defenders around her. She's got no real option. She might as well kick it off. <laughs> Bit of a... <laughs> that was delightful. <laughs> yep. <laughs> She's really taking it from all angles today, isn't she, bless her? Absolutely. <laughs> well, now the French to show a little bit of what they've got at catch and drive time. They've actually already released it 
He's nearly thrown back in field where Italian hands were waiting. Nourier, she's had her hand up out of your picture down on the right wing for most of the periods of possession that France have had. Ball is up airily here, and uh, Giordano and Giordano Duca. Okay, ball is available. Well, they look go. momentarily like they might be able to keep that held up, but France will go short side. Drew out. Looking to try and step, draw the defenders and get the ball away, which she does. Castel still with work to do. Susha, dummy for Elme. Italy make the tackle through Lucia Guy. They're loading well, and round the corner they come. Italy looking a little short of defenders. Now a penalty advantage. Chambon has a little look herself. Emmeline Gros, number eight. Will carry, will dummy, will score. Fourteenth cap for Emmeline Gros. She's back doing what she does best. So powerful. And from that sort of range, able to give France their second try. Yeah, they certainly are. And Caroline Drouin there just testing the short side. It's really this forward pack that are making the punch. And you just feel like one or two carries that are close to the try line. And France seem to be able to break the Italian defence very easily. I was watching the defensive line set from the Italians. They were very slow to fold round. They weren't acknowledging where the threat was. There were six hanging out on the short side when it was very clear that France were playing open. So it's communication and just a bit of work rate right there. Position of the score, no problem. Thor drew out right in front of the sticks. And just like that, it's what the French can do. Striking once more. They lead 17-3 now. It's a lovely little show and go, isn't it? Just a subtle little slip off there with the player running out the back was enough to be a decoy to open up that gap for Emmeline Gros. Goning. She wants this to be contestable. Or oh, it will be. Superbly plucked out of the air by Sillery. Super restart. Stefan. Rigoni. Quick offload. Working well to find Sperna. Rigoni. Seems to be a target for the French today. Tunisie once more. Stefan. Batoni. Oh, that's loose. Needs to be picked up by Muzzo. She's been in good form as the uh, Biloba winger. Manuela Ferlan has been playing on the wing, but they've opted to put Ostuni Minuzzi onto the bench to bring Muzzo on and move Ferlan back to that 15 shirt. But it's now Lea Murier. Haven't seen her with the ball in too much space. Clear. Clear release. Sillery's gone in to try and get the ball back, but she never released the player. Dean, there must be a clear release. It's a technical difference. Sillery's got no interest in making eye contact with referee Sarah Cox there. She's been pinged and she knows it. And as a result, Italy are losing yardage. Yeah, so the clear release refers to the tackle contest. If you make that tackle, there she's a tackler assist. She's got to show a clear re release. And it's almost got to be theatrical, you know. You get trained to sort of give yourself bird wings, you know, flap your arms up in the air, making and it a clear, clear release. And you mean a clear position. release on the player, that's it. On the player, then you can go back onto the ball. Oh, mate. Drew out from Chambon. Very happy to punch it up physically, Drew out. Little tummy inside from Vernier. She's a mischievous 12. Philippon, Jacquet. Ball's been lost forwards in the tackle. Italy need to get the communication going. Wasn't quite on point from Magatti and Furlan there. They have got the knock-on advantage. 
offload over the top. And another. Elme in to make the tackle. Up to the edge of the 22. OK, she's good there. There's no advantage. You're always going backwards. We'll come back. Scrum Italy. On. You're always going backwards, yeah. Very happy to take a taxi no to offload City if that's where Italy want to take it because uh, it may have been inside their own 22, but that was quite fun. Yeah, well, that's where the you know only real try, try scoring opportunity has come is from that offloading play. But it's so difficult when you're facing against such a physical team. But they have managed to sort of get on those edges, get on the sides of players okay. and get that offloading Good. game going. Okay, it go. is high risk, high reward. But you know, as we said at the beginning of this match, you know, France very much have the favourites tag in this fixture. And in all honesty, it's probably not one the Italians are really targeting. So absolutely, Six. go for it. Play with no ambitions. Your first time back together in a long time. See what you can do. Italy travelled up on Friday. Managed to make use of that, Rigoni. Oh, lovely little ball to send Elisa Dinka into space. Dinka looking at the options, but might just ride the tackle. Gets the pop-up, that was nice for Magatti. Magatti then the offload for Sillery. And Rigoni wants it out to the left. France have... It's back from white, back from Oh, France have knocked it backwards, says referee Sarah Cox. But now it's a penalty to Italy. No, 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 no. She just had the ball in her hands, lifted it. Well, well. Just telling you about Italy's travel arrangements, but there was some, there was some rugby being played, so I thought it probably wasn't as interesting. <laughs> oh, what a fantastic line break, though, wasn't it? Can you check? If there is, if there is something. She had the ball on hand, and. Okay, you ready? You ready? We'll talk, we'll talk. Yeah, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> Manuela no, Ferlan is just getting a report of information in Sarah Cox. And Bea Rigoni yes. is to put it into Team the 22. It. It's all good. Yep. Here we go. This is where we see that yes, line break. Yes, well done, Lovely. Just getting on the outside edge there. Oh, there were so many players there, straight. but crucially, that was really good scramble yes. D there she from France. Just getting bodies in between the passing twice. channels. Okay. Oh, gosh, if they could have got that ball say. away, that could have been a brilliant try. Lovely Central break here. Gap, please. Some Dinka. First time we're seeing her in the centres. Down for it, Giordano. Stefan. Brigoni, oh. lovely little floated ball back inside for Aramuzzo. Oh, that was Shut delightful. When you pick the ball up. Up on your feet, and it's the please. sort of dynamic play that is drawing penalties from France. She's kneeling on the player on the floor. She must be on her feet. It certainly is, and everything That's is being done right on the gain line. Let's have another look at this again. Crucially, it's that tip on pass that back inside. She doesn't even have a chance to actually look inside. That's, that's fantastic. That shows when you know your players, you know the type of running lines that they do. She didn't even have the opportunity to look inside. And still managed to get that pass away. Sillery. We'll put another three on the Italian tally. Takes them to within 11. There's two French tries. <laughs> Certainly compounding that okay. lead, but Italy will be pleased. Opportunities for points in the 22 are being taken. Yes, they're absolutely creating things. They've had some lovely strike plays. It's, it's just holding on to it, seeing it through to the end. Giordano, nice bit of footwork. The ball is there. She's not on the ball. Stefan. Sillery's giving chase to this. You're offside in front of the kick. Oh, that must have been very, very close. Yeah. She's in front, 13, in front of the kicker. Yeah. 
ball into the 22. Really frustrating, another offside penalty. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Arne, who's lost the head guard okay, yeah, momentarily. I understand. Right. Numbers clear, please. Yeah. What are your numbers? Five. Six, sorry. Six, sorry. You've got six, okay. <laughs> Sarah right. Cox asked the numbers. Gail Ome says five. Six. Well, they currently have six in the line now. Okay. Now Italy add one more. Got the confusion. They've seen it knocked forwards. I'd say they were at sixes and sevens. They were at fives and sixes. <laughs> I'm here all week. <laughs> outside, outside. There is your mark. Italy just confirming whether the scrum is inside or outside the 22. Referee confirming it is outside. So this okay. means that there can't be a clear clearance directly into touch. Or the line out will only be in line from where it's kicked or on the, on the line of the 22. So. Bind. Set. If they want to make a clearance, they need to set up a ruck inside the 22 or use it and get on the outside. Well, there we go. There's an initial ruck. Now they are inside the 22. Madusu Fowl makes the tackle. Ball is pretty loose. Tidy up job from Francesca Sperna. Interestingly, from that penalty, uh, from that scrum, France were expecting the kick so much they'd really dropped into the backfield. It might have been on for Italy to just shift it through the hands and take a bit of yards with ball in hand, but no matter. Yeah, or potentially even a little dink in behind that centre pairing because, like you say, the back three was so deep. It would have been a real contest on that ball then. Penalty allows Rigoni to take back the few yards they lost when Sillery was offside. Okay. Rigoni arguably taken out off the ball there. Gives Italy this platform. Good turn it. Dinka. That break has just caused the French to narrow up a little bit in that centre channel. Might start to create more space on the outside. But Stefan, then Lucia Guy. Pot of forwards looking for it back on the inside. Foul putting herself around, making the tackles. Rigoni, boot to ball. Jacquet. Sizes up the options, goes left peg. Rigoni fields it just outside the 22. Ball in one hand. She's an absolute keep baller. Going, going. Drew out with the knock on. Drew Am will send it downfield. Down the throw to Manuela Ferlan. Ferlan now having a look at the options herself. And she fancies a bit of a run here. Italy need to be careful with the French line coming up. Duca. Stefan. Back on their own 10 metre line. Look to just get over the head of Castel there, but she feels it on for, on for Jacquet, then Drouin. Drouin dummies the kick, wants to send it back down the left. Castel couldn't hold it. Advantage. Lucia Guy with the knock-on advantage. Italy now with the option and possession. So much space on the open side if they can just get the ball away. OK, you're fine, no problem, no advantage. France getting in a position to win the turnover, so we come back for the knock-on. Now Italy would love to try and set something up to get some points, as we're in the final minute of the first half. It's flown by. Yeah, and you can already see lots of players with hands on hips, taking in deep breaths. It's been a frantic opening first half. We're not playing in the snow anymore <laughs> in the new April window. Yeah for the full TikTok Women's Six Nations. 22 degrees in Grenoble.
Crouch. Bind. Set. There for Stefan. Away on first phase ball for Rigoni. Then the offload. That's lovely for Dinka. Dinka looking for the support. Oh, and Ferlan has thrown it out, but it's gone forwards in the process. It was looking so good to that point. Ferlan just had to hold on to it, you think? Is that the time done? Oh, it's just that ambition, wasn't it? There you go. She knew it was time was nearly up. <laughs> it was worth a gamble. Sorry. Again, those offloading plays. Italy have certainly come to give it their best shot, haven't they? Well, France go into the sheds in the lead, but Italy still looking good for competing in this one. Opportunity going begging just at the end of the first half. Two tries for France through Forlani and Gro. Two penalties from the boot of Solari. It's France 17, Italy 6 at half time.
Okay, mate. Advantage, side. Okay, mate. Advantage, size. Okay, mate. Advantage, size. Okay, mate. Advantage, size. Okay, mate. Advantage, size. Advantage. Advantage over. Advantage over. Oh, oh, back. It's back from white. Back from white.
France 17, Italy 6. Round one of the 2022 TikTok Women's Six Nations. The ball delivered by remote controlled car to the middle. Yeah, Beatrice gotcha. Rigoni picks it up. Okay. She's been the brightest light of that first 40 minutes, hasn't she, Philippa Tatia? Oh, she's been incredible. You know, you got to, you forget that she's not the natural fly half. She's normally a kin in the centre, but she's absolutely been pulling all the strings and taking all the hits with it. De A, what a brilliant first carry from De A, but then Madisu Fall, who well, arguably for the French was one of their brighter lights over that first half, just guilty of a little handling error. There've been a few from the French. Italy now looking to. Stack the players to the right-hand side. Yes, I am very much enjoying their ambition in these backline plays. They really are mixing things up. It's good to see. It's almost a bit NFL-like, the sort of style that they're trying to play with. Lots of deception, lining up players in different places. Set. It's OK. I've got a picture of my side as well, Precious, OK? Okay, you must take that weight. You must hold your weight as well, okay? Up you come. Sarah Cox getting a steer from. That's all right, mate. Precious I've got a picture of side. side. Well, so. We saw it in the first half. Rigoni with Manuela Ferland directly behind her. Crouch! And then Maria Magatti directly behind her. Just designed to keep the French guessing. Set. Elisa Dinka certainly looks like she's wanting to receive it. It's Giordano. It is Dinka. Then Rigoni on the run on the outside. Then Ferlan. Then played on for Aramuzzo. Certainly had gain line success from the position of the scrum, but then it's just been knocked on at the base of the ruck. That was a good defensive set there from France. France had to gamble. Like you say, they didn't really know where the Italian attack was coming from. So they still split their defenders. They had equal amounts to the left and the right of the scrum. And even though the entire Italian back line went round to the right, because they were loaded so directly behind the scrum, their first movement is going to be lateral rather than getting onto the ball. And that lateral movement has had a knock-on effect throughout the Italian backs. They all just ran across. It was actually relatively easier then for the limited numbers that the French had to defend it. They could just shepherd it out to the wider channels. Set! Oh, Philip Patatia, former Welsh international. Who's here? Who's from Grove? Back! Back! Come backwards, referee happy enough. It was a handling error from Magatti, who is well pinned to the floor. <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> Furlan on the outside, but it's going to be the carry from Guy. <laughs> Stefan. Ferlan in first receiver. Rigoni slipping outside. Just delays the pass then. Dinka with the dummy. Goes through initially. And Italy building nicely up to the 22 here. Options left and right. Just didn't have the time to pick the right one. Dinka plays it away now for Duca. Competition for the ball. It comes out. It's come out forwards. France. You're on that ball and you're lifting as well. Managed to get the turnover. They certainly are weathering this Italian attacking storm that they've come out with for the second half. Really nice interlinking play. You say then we've talked so much about Beatrice Fragoni in the first half, just continuing with that form into the second. Just that subtle little dummy pump just to get her on the outside edge there to release the outside backs. And another little dummy and then that offload. Really ambitious to keep that ball alive. French haven't quite known how to defend Alisa Dinka. It's been brilliant work from the inside centre. France, though, coming forward with ambition now. Bro, down for Chambon. Drouin, Deay. Carried so well. Rigoni with the tackle. Chambon will come to the right. More depth on it for Vernier. I think someone else is wearing Gabriel Vernier's jersey this afternoon. Normally expect a lot more 
from the French 12. Yeah, there was lots of those handling errors weren't there in the first 10 minutes from France, and then they kind of seemed to settle into it a bit. Just starting to see them again. You, if you want to be really critical, you could say that pass is dipping. So the players having to catch it just that little bit lower. But equally, are still very catchable. Crouch! Bind! Set! Giordano. Oh, it's a poor pass from the number eight. Ferland was trying to get away. Gets an offload. Menager. And it's with Mutso, but the French are sensing a chance to steal and cause all sorts of problems. Italy have actually got numbers to the right if they were choosing to be ambitious, but this is Rigoni. Well, she is going to look over to this near side. Paul's going to sit up, Lea Mourier. Oh, and now she's knocked it on. Well, that has worked out of sorts, probably yeah. in a way that Rigoni may not have predicted, but ultimately, <laughs> with a French side that have still left to settle, still with 45 minutes on the clock, okay. yeah. another unforced error. Yeah, unfortunately so. And there wasn't really that much of a kick Come chase on. pressure on there that you could say, you know, the Italians got up in her face and really troubled her under that ball. Okay, no problem. Yeah, no worries. She'd be okay. frustrated with that. She Flankers. should have really done better there. But still, okay, let's speed up a little big bit, territorial on, gain again Come on. for the Italians, just edging out of their half, relieving that pressure. There we go. There's the handling errors. 11 to France, five to Italy, and when you have to consider that Italy have actually had slightly more possession as well, and played potentially that little bit more rugby, only having five handling errors is quite a stark contrast. Set. Italy came through as Rugby World Cup qualifiers, beating Scotland 38-13, they lost to Ireland, beat Spain 34 points to 10, we will see them in New Zealand. France's strength in this game really seems to be about choosing the opportunity to compete at those rucks. Italy have got to be strong, physical, and there. Ferlan. Oh, that was a nice delayed pass. And then Dinka. Back in field, Italy come away from the touchline. Magatti really needed someone in support there, but it's still yardage gain for the Azuri. Rigoni. Oh, it was a risky low one, and it goes forwards. Vernier will want to play it. One there, oh. and then one there. Knock on from both sides in the end. So we will have to come back for the scrum. It was a bit of a risky one. I mean, it was a beautiful flat pass, wasn't it? And if it could have been taken, it would have been right on the gain line. There would definitely have been some ground made. But equally, Michaela Soleri, she was just coming around yeah, the back. Potentially, she would have been the better option. Lovely central position this for France. Set! Trombon played her rugby since the age of 10. Made her debut off, off the, the bench against you South two Africa. Need head space, okay? In Van. Enough. Enough. There's no problem when I'm stood there. Give yourself head space. A little chat for uh, Anel de A and Lucia Guy. Or is it Joyeux and Maris? I think it's Joyeux and Maris on the far side, was it? Either way. <laughs> Front row chat, mm, my favourite. <laughs> Crouch! <laughs> Bind! <laughs> Set! <laughs> Big game to be starting this for Chambon. So play it away. Vernier. Then for Gro, Italy reading it sufficiently so far. Chambon went searching. Vernier will get in. Moves up. The play scrum half, but oh, Forlani has other ideas. Takes on a few key meters. De A is not going to take the contact this time. We'll play it away for Joyeux. Penalty France. Must come all the way back round. Must come all the way back round. 
She's hot on the ruck entry, Sarah Cox. Just. The tee has just uh, crept onto the field in the remote control car down below us. Decision almost made for Caroline Drewer. Wanting to try and get France up to 20 points. That's a bit of an interesting call for me, to be honest with you, because I don't think this game is really tight enough to warrant taking just those three. And when you consider they haven't really been into the Italians 22 since the start of their second half, you would have thought that they would have wanted to impose themselves a little bit more on that play. Competition with bonus points as well. And yeah, absolutely. Still got two more tries to acquire. Last quarter of the game and how the replacements fare will be interesting. In the meantime, Drouin takes the three. Italy still on six, France on 20 now. Ten points yeah, for the boot of uh, Caroline Drouin. Uh, yep, so much. Yep. We need to see this. So we have time off and 12 as we have changes being made so uh, it's going to be the last we see of Elisa Dinka and uh, also Sarah Tunisi finishes her job so Veronica Medea is coming onto the field and also Valeria Fadrigi and I just wonder with Medea on whether that's going to be more of a sign of Rigoni slipping into the 12 channel a little more. We will see. Well, mate, sizes up the options. Opts to take the contact. Was there ever going to be any other decision for the French captain? Oh, it's out on the full loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. That's all right. I couldn't find you. Sorry, mate. There you go. Error from France. Yeah, just another bit of an unforced error, as you did mention there for Alexandra Chambon. This is a big test for her to come into, but equally World Cup year, it's about testing that strength and depth. And with Paul on, it's on the wrong mark. Paul Lee, sorry, Paul Don out injured. It gives the opportunity for her to start a test. But there is the ever so experienced Marie Sansouz on the bench, which I dare say we will be seeing an appearance from her in the latter stages of this game. By White. Italy under a lot of pressure, but the knock on has come from France. Madusu Fall will still put her body on the line. Oh, a lovely little run around the corner from Guy. Stefan to the right, but Tony looked to tip it on. Philippons wristled it away. There, and then there was to you as well, okay? So double. First from blue, then from white. I hadn't heard Sarah Cox call yeah, the advantage off. over. I thought we may be going back, but uh, she must have done. For white. Okay. Madis Ufal. Had a brilliant first half. Nine. Oh, I thought I heard four. No. Nope. It is going to be lost on Seuss, just as you mentioned, Philippa Tatia. to Luzanne scrum half started against South Africa was on the bench twice against New Zealand almost feel a little bit hard done by perhaps with board on out obviously as you mentioned a chance for Alexandra Chambon to have shown what she can do set Sansus now on she's collapsed it's a really handy player she will raise the tempo Erme Drouin Philippon You can't play the ball on the floor, we go back. Clear communication from Sarah Cox. Collapse. Number one. Collapse. It has been an absolute pleasure over the last 48 hours plus to see the amount of content in all sorts of places, whether it's on TikTok itself or across the broadsheets, the red tops, podcasts everything just the amount of content has been uh, yeah. overwhelming not been able to keep up with it but there have been a fair few people in there who already had their eye on uh, Laurent Sanssouce as a potential player of the championship and then uh, 
Well, Annick Road goes and names her on the bench, so that's confounded <laughs> everyone, hasn't it? But she is now onto the field. She's uh, just under half an hour to start her campaign. Erme at the back, but it's tacked down from Italy. Medea. Stefan. Carrie was from Sperna. Calvisano. Back rower having to work. I mentioned it without the likes of Arigetti. Or oh, unnecessarily thrown back in field from Solari. So. France come up again, but that looked like a potential position for the turnover, and it is. In the meantime, Michaela Sillery is down. Come off. No worries. No, no, she was on the ball first, then you pull her off her feet. My only worry, really, with Italy, could they be slipping into now that channel of overplaying? Yeah, she just gets bit of whiplash there when you land on your back like that. I think... She yeah, definitely I think so. Needs to be checked From what out, we've just sure seen there, okay. Chris. Yeah, there is no foul play. The tackle from four is legal. Yeah, no foul plays. So there's no direct contact with and the head. There's no lifting of the hips going above the it. shoulders. Sort she of tick tackling head on anything floor. like that. Oh, yeah. It is just a it's heavy a collision, tackle. but still needs to be checked out by the medics. Yeah, nice work, Chris. Thank you. Conversation uh, with Chris Asmus, Canadian man in the truck. Confirms no foul play. Sillery allowed a moment. Do you want to make a sub? Do I want to make a sub? Just down below us, Emily Boulard is waiting to make her entrance. Here comes yeah, no, Boulard. Sorry, we've got time. Uh, Zoe Allcroft, World well, well, Rugby Player of the Year, and uh, Helena Rowland were the only ones who played every minute of the 2021 Championship. She's replacing Vernier. Interesting. We normally see her coming on at fullback. Potentially, there could be a little bit more of a reshuffle in the back line now. Uh, yeah, I wonder whether Jacquet will come forwards. Yeah. It's looking like that. Hey, Neck. Okay. It's not that uh, Gabby Vernier has done a lot off. wrong. She rarely does, but just so they just so quite stood up and found the space that we would often find her doing. Yeah. Sillery is going to leave the field. Who's No worries, um, are Victoria they just replacing her as well with the Just chuck her on, Ames, and then they can sort the, the card out. Yep. So just confirm it's HIA. It's actually been referred yeah. to no Ostudi Minuzzi as a little no Manuela Ferlan. Similar players, unpredictable. Got a good skill set, though. She's a confident player as well. Good, are we all done? So just as we see a little reshuffle in the French back line, we may be seeing one in the Italian one as well. Rigoni takes place, takes play up to the halfway line. Over line, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Goni is now slotting into that centre position. Yeah, she's just outside Medea. It's really well taken at the top. It's not straight. She's oh, caught it on the outside. It wasn't straight, though. You've caught it on the outside. It's not straight. Yeah, Medea in at 10, Rigoni at 12, and uh, Ferlan has moved forwards onto the left wing. So Ostuni Minuzzi will take place at 15. And <laughs> Got a bit more familiarity to things. I think Aramuzzo has stepped in at outside centre. Bind. Set. 
Sansus. It's going to go blind. Straightens on back in field. This is the full work from Sansus. Gets the corner, the call on the shoulder from Madhu They're screaming for it down on the left side. Has that gone forwards? Oh, it certainly has now. Oh, really good awareness there by Laurie Sansus going down the blind side. But just as we were saying that the Italian backs are looking like they're in their more familiar positions, Manuela Ferlan was nowhere to be seen. It was she was covering so deep it was almost like she was trying to protect from a 50-22. You can see her now literally got on her bike as soon as the play opened up to try and come forward and eat away at the space. But by that time the play had opened up. Really good awareness there by Laurie Sansus. Massive pass. Bit ambitious to try and get that away. Italy under pressure. And the Stad des Alps turns up the volume on them as well. Eight metres from their own line. It's their put in. I expect the big shove. There it is. Or oh, Stefan runs around the corner and feeds Rigoni, who's driven back. It's another good carry. Round the corner they come again. Sansus. Looking to try and lead that defensive line. Medea. Didn't have a lot of time and space to get that away. Not done too badly. Yeah, it looked like a bit of a spiral yep. bomb. It had a lot more upward trajectory yep. than it did forward, unfortunately. But like you say, she was under a lot of pressure there. Just needed to get it cleared. <laughs> Axel Bertumieux. Another one of the youngsters, 21 years of age, okay. the uh, Blagnac back rower. Replaces Roman Menege, who's certainly put herself about as well. Right, this speeds up. They are on their mark. Okay. You set the gap. Okay. You set it. Right, speed up, please. Time is on. France step in. Italy steal. <laughs> Stefan. Medea. Rigoni. Magatti. Ferlan was well downed. France sensing a chance to steal, and they do. It's just the risk in the modern game if you're going to run into space. And Sansus is determined to punish Italy with the quick tap. There for Joyeux. Sansus looks again. De A will be the dummy runner, but now it must be on. Philippon, Emmeline Gros, the final pass, the finish needed from Léa Mourier. France get try number three. And Murier finally gets into the game. She certainly does, and that's the first time we've really seen this back line actually fire a shot. And that is what they can do, running from pace, from depth. You know it's the old cliche that everything in France goes through the number nine, <laughs> but it's a cliche that's just standing so true. Thank you, Chris. Lloris on Seuss has brought so much urgency into their game plan. They're reacting so much better to their attacking opportunities. And a lovely pass there from Aline Gro. Just again, that footwork, just making sure that she can fix the player on the inside to release that winger. Well, by far, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, cool, thanks, Caroline right. Drouin's toughest it. effort. <laughs> Drift over to the left. Four out of five. Eighty percent will do. Another chance to see it again. Draw and pass from Gro. A little bit behind Murier, but she had enough room to finish. She's waited long enough, three years since her last cap. Started the opening three games of that Six Nations, scoring against Wales. Well, she's back scoring for France.
25-6 now. Just tick past the hour mark. Elme. Jean-Sus. Osturi Menuzzi. Stefan. Ferla. Rigoni. <laughs> it's the right option. Did that come off white then? Or Just did a it little. Come off blue? Tackle! Too far forwards from Medea. Thanks, mate. Just got caught up. Stefan. Rigoni. Batoni. <laughs> okay, let's on! Central position. France seeming a little hungrier defensively. A tighter line. Castel. Jacquet. Oh, it wasn't an easy one for Gro to take Advantage. in the sunshine. And then Ferland misses the opportunity to take the advantage. No advantage, knock on. Yeah, turn off. Yeah, I'm not sure that was the best attacking opportunity there. And I know when it's a quick what? turnover, you want to play, but they really didn't have much room on that short side, and there were plenty of defenders there. You get a quick turnover like that, you want to get it away from where the turnover just happened, because that's where you're more likely to find lazy defenders. Well, here come the uh, French equivalent of the bomb squad. Lord <laughs> Tuyer, Coco Lindelauf and Asia Kalfawi, and uh, it's a debut for the number 18 Stade Bordelais prop. Turned 21 on Thursday, well, what a gift, an opportunity to win your first cap for your country. Oh, no, you're fine. She comes there on to join teammate your mark. from uh, club Madhu What? Coco Lindelauf as well, who uh, is only on for her fourth cap. 21-year-old Blognac player. Crouch! Bind! Montpellier, Blognac, Toulouse. Set. These are the real powerhouses of French club rugby. And the powerhouses of the French front row are doing a real job on the Italian put-in. Number six. Well, well. Back into scrum. Francesca's Bona was unable to use it when it came on her side. Downfield it goes. Certainly do start to feel momentum is changing now. A couple of little wins like that, coming off the fresh of a really good try. Start to just feel the urgency from France starting to lift. Italy looking a little tired. They played a lot of rugby so far. All back. Perhaps not the call that was expected at the line out, but they won't mind. Elme wants it quickly. She's going to be the dummy runner. Madison Fall has knocked it forwards. Italy haven't used it tidily, but Rigoni one out the back. Ferlan, Ostuni Minuzzi. It's a little bit loose. I don't know how many more tricks Bea Rigoni has got up her sleeve. <laughs> Look at that. That's the impact she's made since she's come on. Three tackle breaks already. Always 58 meters. Off. She certainly is adding that intensity to the game. Like I say, Italy just got to be careful now of overplaying, especially in their half. I need to get Beatrice Rigoni into my touch team. from an Italian point of view. Stefan to Medea, the miss pass. Muzzo had a lot of work to do. Penalty Italy. It's just unfortunate. 13, no, no, you're absolutely fine. Number 13 must roll. It goes against Philippon.
Kiss. Kiss. Yeah, you can just see their hands on. Stay on the mark. Stay on the mark. Yeah. Sympathetic language from Sarah Cox, wasn't it? Recognising that the players had all gone through and rather trapped Philippon, but regardless, yeah. she's on the wrong side. And at the very top of the sport, if you're there, you're denying a team the chance to play, well, you will be penalised. Not the tidiest, and then the tap down, and then Medea spotting the opportunity while France had just taken a step forward. <laughs> opportunity to get in the back, but then isolated and then turned over. It's superb from France defensively. Yeah, big applaud from the crowd there. Just taking the momentum out of anything that the Italians are trying desperately to string together in these latter stages of the game. Really looking to challenge hard as soon as they get anywhere near the French 22. Look at that. Two bodies in straight over the ball. Carl Fowey and Bertumia. Okay, turn back on. Job well done by the two replacements. Down from Bertumia. Sansus fancies the short side once more. May not be that sensible. No one was with her. On side. Loose attempt at the offload means Italy have the ball. Stefan Bertoni. The hooker drives forward, but okay. France look to defend and try and counter ruck. Medea, no look pass. Giordano. They need to get quick ball, Italy, because the French are slowing them down at ruck time so well. And now it's loose. Need somebody to jump down on it. Sperna managed to just control it. A little bit of handbags off the ball. Rigoni forced into a defensive clearance. You have to hand all credit to France there for the pressure that they put on, but... Yeah, Italy. specifically off this play here, as soon as that ball goes to ground, you can see every single player for France Three. just took it up another gear, really putting okay, that pressure on. Three, two, Seems there's an urgency nine. from Italy when they Three, get that unexpected two, turnover, that, that handling error from France, to so then suddenly have to do something incredible, and it's almost that energy that's then forcing I'll their own the errors, and yeah. on this one. it's, uh, it's frustrating, yeah. frustrating to watch anyway. Yeah. Changes then made onto the field for cap number 102, Sarah Baratin. No. Last one was against Scotland in the World Cup qualifiers. No, we've not got time on. They are making substitutions. Also onto the field, Sarah Sayek. Calvisano spent some time at Wasps, of course, as well. Baratin straight into the action, gets it away. Fedrigi. France wanted to get their mitts in there, but Rigoni didn't want that going straight into touch. Oh, that's brilliant. And has it been touched in from France as well? Amy Barrett Theron, just down below us, has the flag in the right hand and the hand out to the left. Yeah, I think it just came off her ankle. I think she just got caught a little indecisive there, wasn't quite sure what the best way to field that one was. Victoria Bikini. On for a fourth okay. cap, the 20 year old. Down it comes. Francis. Giordano. Baratin. Loose. But an advantage being played. France chucking themselves across the line out. Straight across. Yeah, you can see that player at the back pod there. It's being lifted across the line out. Just sent a little bit of energy from Italy go. now they've had what? a couple of penalties and 11 minutes on the clock <laughs> still a long way to go and they still haven't managed to threaten the France try line more than one held up effort in the first half but 
sense of ambition and energy here. Michaela Sillery is uh, just down below us. In five. Again, advantage. It's upset me south of the Madia. Mall. Ball back inside. That was nice for Magatti. Yep. Same again. Let's keep the mark right Madia. Please. Ostuni Minuzzi, Ferlan. Drop here. Baratin. Low drive into the French 22, but they look to try and get turnover ball. It'll be let go that time. Baratin looks at the options. Rigoni. Good take right on her bootstraps at this time of the game from Gaia Maris. There's another advantage. Baratin. She's fresh on the field, she wanted something quick, but Rigoni Second is saying, let's put this in the corner. The line out. Straight across again. Again, no 20. Seven metres out then. This got to stop. Sarah Cox is just warning the French, they've had a couple of lineouts where they've thrown players across. The words were, it's got to stop. I would take that as a last warning, wouldn't you? <laughs> In from Vakini, it's loose over the top. Tidy up job will need to be done. And it is. Baratin, then Jordana Duca. Debut against England four years ago. Giordano, occasion of her 50th cap. Medea, Rigoni, this is better from Italy. Bit between their teeth, metres from the French line. Just slows down momentarily. Fadrighi with the carry, accompanied by Vacchini. Back to the short side, Rigoni wants to float it over the top. Back inside for Ostuni Minuzzi, French. Want Let's to look to the touchline, but Italy keep it in. All back, all back. Backwards from Baratin. It was loose from the replacement. Furlan gets in. Ball pops up. Oh, it's gone forwards, and France may have their hands on it. It's coming back on the Italian side, but the handling error, after all the bluff and bluster from the Italians, gives the French the get out of jail free card. Yeah, and in, in part, you think that Italy have played so much rugby, is it justified those 25-6? But the truth okay. in the matter is that French defence has stood true when it's needed to. In crucial times, it has absolutely weathered the storm. There have been so many offloads. There were so many phases in that play. In from Sansus. Wants to get the pick from Hermé before the clearance. Not much of an angle to work with there and takes it up to the 22. That's decent from the replacement scrum half. Yeah, it is decent, but you know, I personally I think the Italians would have been so deflated from losing that ball in that position and worked so hard through those sets. I think actually France could have been just a pick and go, try and set themselves. I think they would have gained some meterage from that and then give themselves a better angle to, to exit. It's kind of like you know, reading the opposition in front of you. What have they just done and when your thought process of what are we going to do now? Well, big moments for Italy. They bring on Emanuela Stecca into the front row and Alessandra Frangipani, two debutants, 25 years old and 18 years old. Frangipani is uh, no, no. Wait, wait. highly rated by one Giada wait, yeah. Franco, but uh, we also should bow down okay. for the World Rugby Player of the Decade. Replacement Jesse Tremoulier comes onto the field. Been familiar with Tremoulier for some time. I only found out this week that her nickname is the Duchess. That is great, just great. Italy with possession though, Medea. Philippon's gone for the turnover, but straight off her feet she goes. 
France throwing bodies at it. Advantage. There's a penalty advantage coming to Italy, and little surprise. Baratine wants to go quickly. I haven't blown the penalty, and you're already tapping. I haven't blown. Now they have more time. Rigoni will fancy this into the corner. Clear the breakdown. Nearly <laughs> <laughs> got her head taken off by Sarah Cox. Gail, discipline. Okay. You must change in here now, okay? Okay. Well, if the previous one wasn't a warning, that one certainly was. Confirmation from our French broadcast friends that Madhu Soufal is the TikTok Women's Six Nations player of the match. No, get your gap sorted. She's been you are at the core the Move over, of what France Move have done over. well, which has been the physicality on, on and the right owning line. that defensive line. Yeah, and it certainly you had a feeling that yes. she kind of broke and that deadlock where France couldn't quite get into the game. She scored that try and they created a bit of momentum from that. So, yeah, very active around the park. Ball cleared downfield from France. It's a really good take on the run from Magatti. But now where's she going? She's running out of options. France arrive in number. Medea. Another carry for Duca. Giving herself well to the cause for Italy. Medea. Another little tip on from Fadrigi. She's on her feet. France turn it over. Could this present them the opportunity to go for the fourth try and secure the bonus point? Sansus opts to go right. Jacquet. Philippon. Oh, and then it opens up beautifully. It's a super run here from Emily Boulard. Boulard with Sansus in support, but Boulard won't need her. France get the fourth try on the bonus point in Grenoble. They come alive through Emily Boulard. And that's much more like we're used to seeing from these French backs. Elusive running, but she really kicked onto that ball. It was a lovely line of run, but as soon as she got it, she just hit the boosters. It was a clear injection of pace that took her beyond that gain line. There's not much on here, look. Bit of a miscommunication from the inside player there. <laughs> a tiny little show and go, and it's lucky that she made that there. Thank you. Was the miss from Locatelli, wasn't it? Just yeah. got on her outside. <laughs> Conversion. From Jesse Tremoulier. France up to 32 now. The game wrapped up. Really well taken, or was it just, just shy three. of 10 metres? That must have been 9 metres and 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But not 10, yeah. that still is. Not Interesting ten. call then, obviously, Madhu Soufal, as we see, as the uh, player of the match. It's rare in these parts that if France are cruising to a four-try victory that you wouldn't give it to one of the French players. But an honourable mention for Beatrice Rigoni, who has uh, steered Italy so well. Oh, absolutely. She's been Outside. incredible in this game. Outside. The amount of offload she's got through, the creative play that she's managed to impose. Yeah, I think she's done really, really well. Set! Penalty, France. Dominating the last few minutes now. Acrobatics from Furland to try and keep it in.
France with a chance awesome, to put the cherry on the Can you cake. Tell me when it's done, please? Yeah, and I think they'll be hunting this one out. You know, they'll be under no illusions as much as this is a good win for them. They'll feel their frustrations. They'll feel like they've left a lot out there. Times where there was unforced handling errors, just weren't quite flowing as a team. So I think this, they're going to see this as a real opportunity to try and finish this off on a high. It'll start with the catch and drive. Sansus has a little look. Oh, the offload for Jacquet. Italy roll out the red carpet for France. Sansus thunders up it off the ball for Jacquet. The fullback gets over. It'll be five for France. Absolutely brilliant. When you talk about honourable mentions there to players, if there was a player off the bench award, you'd be giving it to Laura Sansus because the impact she has had. Lovely little scoot, but it's the offload look. She sucks in three players. That is the, her threat. Look, you've got three players all eyes on her, not looking then at the lovely line coming from out to in, just on her shoulder's edge. Lovely try for Chloe Jacquet. Tremouli out. Works on the farm with her father and her brother, back for the first time since the friendly with England last April. And notches up another two. France 39, Italy 6. Coming up to the last play of the match. It's really subtle, but she just changes her hand on the ball there, Sansus. Goes from it being in two, then hugs it into her chest as she goes Thank through you. contact, but then still releases it for the offload. Subtle little skills like that. Chris, can you just give us a makes her so good. Ball goes forward. Philippon tried to jump on the ball, but Italy have it. Penalty France, Italy isolated. Coxie there check of the time in a realistic position to from catch the ball. Lawson no Seuss. Okay, cool. Thank you. And this will be the final moments. Although I think it's just a decision as to whether they need any more, but I don't think they do. And Jesse Tremulier agrees. Well, what seemed and started as a slightly stuttering performance from France, albeit with the subtitle of a few of the bigger names missing and a chance to develop a little bit more talent and experience. Five tries in all, it has ended up for Le Bleu, playing in the white, among the white snow-capped mountains of Grenoble. They have beaten Italy by 39 points to six. Italy, who offered perhaps more than that scoreline suggests, but soundly beaten in the end. Madhu Soufal, the TikTok women's player of the match. Just out of your shot, Anike Rowe and Andrea Di Giandomenico congratulate each other. It finishes at the Stade des Alpes, France 39, Italy 6.